I'm sure you can hear that. That's the sound of them finishing the concrete for our tilt slab behind us. Is this going? Yeah, okay, good. Anyway, that's the sound of them finishing a tilt slab behind us. You can see it, they ride around in these little things that look like flying saucers. And they're zooming over the top of the concrete, finishing it. And then this is a slab for the bottom. Next, what they'll do is they'll pour the walls and then they'll tilt the walls up. I call them our tilt slab toadstools. And they pop up around here like crazy. These are two one million square foot ones over here that I've shown you across the time. Hey, there's another runner, first other runner I've seen out here. This morning I read an article and you can see what they're doing back out over here. If you look over here, there's miles, just miles and miles of this. Miles and miles of everything being built out. Yesterday I put together a new playlist that's just all rock and roll. And this morning I was reading an essay from the Washington Post on by a millennial on why millennials are postponing adult decisions and staying away from adult priorities. And I have to confess, I felt like my father because I thought to myself, yeah, because they're a bunch of big babies. There was just no two ways for me to look at it and really feel serious about the whole thing. Because they used to not call it postponing priorities, they used to call it extended adolescence because they just wanted to live at home longer because they wanted to stay around their mom and dad. And I started thinking about it. You know, I really think part of the problem, part of the challenge with it is, is the lousy music they had. We had generational changing music. We had music that changed lives. I mean, when I was 14, I was listening to, uh, listen to uh, Johnny Winters playing rock and roll hoochie coo. When I was 15, I was listening to Eric Clapton and um, Derek and the Dominoes playing. Um, I looked away. I mean, if there's not a better riff in any song than I looked away when you listen to that guitar riff, but then when you listen to just the the heartfelt of I fell in love with this woman and then just for a moment I looked away and she was gone. I mean we had music. We had music that defined a generation and I know that's you know trite and it's said over and over but it's true. There are some things that are trite but they're true. It defined a generation. It's the reason that Elvis wasn't popular with our generation. People look back and our kids think oh well we all loved Elvis but Elvis was born in the generation of Johnny Cash, as opposed to being born in the generation of Bob Dylan just a decade later. And so for each of us, there's this time that we come up with with the music and the music the kids are listening to. There's a lot of really interesting music. There's a lot of music for social change. I mean, I really love Ben Harper. I listened to a long interview with Jack Johnson last night that was really good. I mean, I'm not saying there isn't good music, but when they asked um, Jack Johnson, who he listens to today, he said Jimi Hendrix. He said he wants his children to grow up on the right kind of music. Ben Harper, yes, yeah, Ben Harper, who's listening to it? It's music from the 60s. And I think sometimes we forget that we had the opportunity to listen to Jeff Beck play I Ain't Superstitious with Rod Stewart, singing those incredible um, vocals that he had on I Ain't Superstitious. You know, we had the opportunity to have music that was just absolutely mind-blowing. And you hear kids today talking about, you know, postponing their priorities. Half of our superstars, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and a collection of others, they were dead Brian Jones by the time they were 27. They had lived, we, our superstars sang songs, said, I hope I die before I get old, and that meant 30 years old. I'm not encouraging anyone to go out and hope they die before they get old. And I'm not encouraging anyone to live the insane lifestyles that so many of us lived back then. But I looked it up what Jack Johnson at the age of 44, who he completely considers himself an accidental star, how much he's worth already, he's worth $20 million. You could have put all of our stars together in the 60s together and they weren't worth $20 million maybe the Beatles, but even then I doubt if they were worth $20 million. It just was a different, different reality. And for us to somehow remember every generation needs something that defines them and it frightens me 
that this is what's going to define the generation that's living right now. A bunch of toadstool tilt slabs. That this is what's going to define the generation just following us is Amazon and all their great big million square foot fulfillment centers. That this is what's going to define my grandchildren's generation is that these miles, square miles of I don't even know what they're putting out here and then whatever goes in on these open lands. That what defines them is just a pursuit of more. What, persigns, what defines them is just a pursuit of how can we get it, how do we build it, how do we sell it? As opposed to this cry freedom. This cry freedom that came out of the music of our generation. I would encourage you to listen to some of the good music that I grew up on. Listen to the words, listen to the sounds. Some of it lasts. I listen to Sea Train, listen to the Song of Job, if you can dig it up someplace. Great song. How many groups are out there doing music like that today? The Song of Job. Read the Book of Job and read the cry and the plea of Job. And it was the cry of a generation in the 60s, really, that felt like we're being spurned by our families, by God. We're be How do we deal with this? And in that, there was a defining moment that cried out in our music. I feel blessed to be of that generation. And if I were to hand something down to my children and grandchildren besides the good news of Christ Jesus besides that which God has given us in the love and creation way before it would be money or all this concrete they're putting out here in this field to sell whatever they want to sell it would be the love of a defining moment whether it's music a sport the love of something that together they can feel like we are bonded by this I'm thankful to be a part of my generation I'm thankful to be part of a generation that knew this is who we are, not just this is who we were. God bless you. Have a great day. Be about who you are today. Be about not just who you were, but who you are today. And then somehow encourage the children around you, the millennials who are postponing their priorities, that if they love to invest themselves, don't wait. If they love, to write their hearts all across that love because in a moment, like Eric Clapton said, I looked away and so much of life is gone. God bless you. You're the miracle. Don't forget it for a moment. Be the miracle today in everything you say and do. Define your day with amazing acts of love.